Okay, so I'm going to start the session today with a talk titled Lipedema is Different Than Obesity. And here are my disclosures. So we know, especially from the amazing talks that we've seen at this conference, that there are uh, women with lipedema who have a body mass index greater than 30 kilograms per meter squared, which is the definition of obesity. And therefore, many women with lipedema get confused as having lifestyle-induced obesity, and they're taught to, um, they're, they're told to diet and exercise and come back. Or um, they get referred for bariatric surgery directly because healthcare, many healthcare providers don't know about lipedema. And because lipedema is often accompanied by non-lipedema obesity, which makes it even more confusing. And then they can develop lymphedema and develop even more adipose tissue. And I, I would just like to say that at this point, we are unable to differentiate between, at least like with imaging, and, and even a clinical exam between what tissue is lipedema tissue and what tissue is non-lipedema tissue. And we, we know that lipidema tissue is very difficult to lose by different eating plans, by exercise, and by bariatric surgery, but I don't think we know definitively that it can never be lost by eating plans, exercise, and bariatric surgery. And we know that many women respond very well to different eating plans and to bariatric surgery, and other women do not. And so I think that um, we may be overcalling lipedema in some cases and, and undercalling it in others. So when you see somebody put up a picture of a woman with lipedema and she has a lot of tissue on her on the abdomen, I would caution in calling her just simply lipedema. So I just think we have to be careful in our descriptions of women with lipedema. So we know that lipedema tissue has a distinct distribution and it's usually symmetric. It's found on the lower abdomen, although that's contentious. In Germany, they do not believe that there is any lipedema tissue on the abdomen, only on, on the legs. And sometimes it's mentioned on the hips and the buttocks in Germany as well. It, it tends to be symmetric, but it can be somewhat asymmetric as you can see in this woman on the right. And in non-lipidema obesity, the adipose tissue tends to form primarily on the abdomen, but you can see when there's a very large abdomen and a person is sitting a lot, that tissue can press on the groin area and they can develop venous disease and they can develop some tissue that looks kind of like lipidema. And then we call her lipidema, but actually it, her the changes in the tissue on the legs originated because of obesity. So there are many studies now showing that lipidema tissue is different than obesity. Now, his, histological examinations um, have shown this. There's two studies we definitely need more because there is such a wide phenotypic presentation amongst women with lipidema. Uh, there's a couple studies that show that tissue gene expression is different between the two tissues, but again, there's so many uh, differences in phenotypic expression that um, we need more. Um, the actual type of lipids can be different in the tissue, and this may be very dependent on diet, and so until we have studies that control for the type of fat that's eaten and the type of food that's eaten, I don't think we'll really know whether the lipids are actually different or not, because a lot of women with lipidema eat very, very well. They eat very, very clean, and they may be being compared to women with non-lipidema obesity who don't eat as clean. And then we know that, um, or it looks like, that the adipokines or cytokines that are secreted by lipidema adipocytes are different as well. And finally, there's quite a few studies looking at stem cells between women with uh, lipidema versus women without lipidema, and they behave differently as well. So these, are, these studies are all giving us insight into exactly what is the path, you know, pathophysiology of lipidema, and we really do not understand it at this point. 
This is a really interesting study on zinc finger 423. This is a gene that drives stem cells from endothelial cells into adipocytes. And this is a study out of Austria, and they found that zinc finger 423 gene expression was much higher in cells from lipidema thigh tissue. And it was, um, um, it was higher in uh, many different cells, but um, specifically in uh, endothelial cells versus controls. And they also found that zinc finger 423 gene expression was higher in endothelial cells from the abdomen in women with lipidema compared to controls. And so this is one of those studies that's giving us a little insight into maybe there is lipidema on the abdomen and maybe lipidema isn't just restricted to the legs and the arms and that it can occur elsewhere on the body. And maybe it, it even could be a systemic disease rather than a disease of just arms and legs. To support this study, uh, Sarah L. Godbon and colleagues showed that PPAR gamma levels were elevated in stem cells from both the thigh and abdomen of women with lipidema. And PPAR gamma is in this zinc, four, zinc finger 423 pathway. So these, these data suggest that lipidema affects both the abdomen and the limbs, and that zinc finger 423 expression is different in lipidema versus non lipidema tissue. And unfortunately, we are not hearing Dr. Cornelie's talk today. He's talking on lipidema tissue and, and pain after bariatric surgery. And what he showed, and kind of retrospectively, after women had bariatric surgery, he examined them and found that they had either stage two or three lipidema, and they still had the same pain they had before the bariatric surgery. So the bariatric surgery did not get rid of the painful tissue. And if you look at some of the pictures in his paper, um, these women lost a significant amount of weight, like 75% of their body weight. So how do you differentiate lipidema from uh, non-lipidema obesity? So I think bruising is a really good marker. Women with lipidema often have um, easy bruising, but I would caution you, if you talk to women in general, they say, oh yeah, I bruise easy. So I think we really need to define, like, what is easy bruising? Pain, women with uh, non-lipidema non obesity tend not to have pain in their tissue, whereas women with lipidema do. And also, when you um, look for uh, the stemmer sign, it tends to be negative in both, so I'd be um, careful there. If you find a positive stemmer sign, it may be that your patient is on the way to developing lymphedema, and this can occur with lipidema or non-lipidema obesity. And, and finally, uh, diabetes is much higher in the non-lipidema obesity population, and it's not high in the lipidema population, yet we say that lipidema tissue is inflamed. So if lipidema tissue is inflamed, why are these women not developing diabetes? What is the difference between their inflamed tissue versus non-lipidema obesity tissue? Is it the location on the body? So thank you so much.